Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Hope everybody had a fantastic weekend. I love this weather. November in Arizona is my favorite month. And then along around the second week of December, we will get a cold front. I know uh, right around oh, the 10th of December around there, it seems to always get down to like 28 to 30 degrees for just a couple of days, just to remind us that it's not going to be nice all year. Um but then after about a week, we tell our friends, well, what do you think of winter? <laughs> so welcome, welcome this morning. Uh, we're going to take a look at, you know, we always talk about inventory, but there's a different story to tell inside of each price range. So I'm going to show you what's going on out there. But this morning, 7,683 homes on the market with 3842 listings coming on board in the past seven days with 3755 going under contract. That's narrowed to a difference of only 87 homes. And you can see here that the number of homes going to contract is gradually starting to come up as the listings are starting to come down. Welcome to Thanksgiving. That's going to happen. So we're going to see that number come down slowly, probably going to be radically different next week because, you know, even when you look at this chart, you can see you've got uh, Memorial Day, 4th of July, Labor Day, so listings come down and sales dip. So it's going to be the same thing, Thanksgiving, Christmas. And as I've been repeating myself, I have no idea what's going to happen in January. I'm hoping we get a slew of new listings. I thought I'd add something here this morning too, and that is just a uh, quick look at a featured listing, uh, just for something for giggles. I've got this link in the um, in the body, the content of this uh, YouTube video. This is a home that was built in 1916. It's in Phoenix. It's down in a historic district down on 30 West Linwood Street. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's got a huge, you can see its proximity to downtown here. There's the, the bank building there. And it's got a guest house in the back, uh, which is pretty neat. And there are a lot of guest homes um, in the historic district. Now, the deal with some guest homes is... And you can take a look at that in the link. Is it if there's a not a guest home, you can't get a permit to put one in. And we talked about those the other day, ADUs, right? But if there is one, you can actually tear it all the way down to the to the frame and then rebuild it. So um, that's something to look at. So if you get into an older home and it's got something that looks like practically a garage, about ready to fall fall down, but it's got water and it's got electricity, you can remodel that puppy. So something to think about when you're looking at homes. Where are we at in this market right now when it comes to rent? Well, you can see it it's flying up. I mean, the average rent here in 219, the end of 219 was 1550 and now we're at 2100. When we had the crash, if we look here, let's find 2005 uh Q4 2005, we were at 1050 and then we quickly went up to by $100 in Q3 in 2006. So rent climbed at the same time that we had this frantic activity to buy homes. So everything was going, going crazy. Then 2008 came and rent went down just a little bit. So at the peak, we were 1150 and then it went down to $1,000. So rent never got that relief after a crash. So, you know, real estate plummeted. Uh, rent kind of just hung in there and it's been doing that until we get to 2014 and then it has just started its upward march this is what we have here for um our average listings what we have in our market and it shows you that they're below 2020 levels it's been doing that for quite some time i thought back here we would cross above it but nope and it's come up slightly but as you saw by my seven day moving average when i pull this up next week it's going to be down so it's starting to come down but what does it really mean well let's look by price range here so because where you know we've got 3,700 homes went under contract this weekend well who the heck are they so if we take a look by price range and I go to the 300 to 400,000 range how many listings are there they're still below 2020 levels if I go to let's see am I following the right thing yeah it just disappears on me 400 to 500,000, we have more. We have considerably more than 2020. So 2020, we had 1,000 listings. And today we have 
1625. So we have 1,600 more homes. And that's where the activity is, is between four and 500,000. Between 500 and 600,000, we are looking at 956 versus last year we had 671. So good morning, Terry. Uh, we do have more listings coming on in those two price ranges. And that's where the activity is taking place. One of the things we look at is a contract ratio. And I'm comparing November to last year, November. And so I'm going to have to, it refreshed here on me. So let me pull off all of the months and just go back to November because it always varies from month to month. So we just want to compare this year to last year. Last year doesn't count. 2020 was a wacky year. But the contract ratio is when a home goes on, um, there's a mathematical ca calculation with 100 being the base level being, you know, what we're just going to call normal. And we're looking at a contract ratio of 1720 overall. But again, let's go back and look at the price ranges. So if you're listing a home or you're buying a home between 400 and 500,000, which is where all the activity is, what's the contract ratio? It's 173.5. If we go to the 300, 400 range, the contract ratio is 257.4. So what does that mean? Well, that means that that price range doesn't have very many listings. It's got, or it does have a lot of listings, but it means that's where all the activity is. So if you're going out and getting some between 300 and 400,000, or if you're listing your home between 300 and 400,000, you have a high probability that you're going to be under contract real quick. That's just the way the market is, is behaving right now. And we can take a look here on what we call the uh, listing success rate by price range. It's basically telling the same story. It's showing here um, that between 250 and 300, 93.9% of homes end up going under contract. That number goes down as you get up over 2 million. 68.6 home percent goes under contract. But the activity is right here, folks. It's between three and 400 and 400 and 500,000. Now, the interesting thing of between four and 500,000, it's their contract ratio is... 90.4%. Um, that's very high. Being above 80 is, is, is good. But that's the price range where I'm seeing people shoot for the moon more. So that, that number of 90% could probably be a lot higher if they were pricing them realistically. But you can tend to see where people shoot for the moon in that price range. So a lot of activity going on between 300,000 and 500,000, even up to 600,000. So when we look at overall, we look at the listings that are out there and we see they're lower than last year, they are not in those median price ranges. Much better than what we saw last year. So uh, there's an opportunity to go shopping and get something. Coming into Thanksgiving, the busiest open house day of the year is the Friday after Thanksgiving. So if you do have a listing, it's not a bad time to put your house uh, in an open house. Now, having said that, the majority of the people coming in are kind of tire kickers. So everybody's got Uncle Joe and Aunt Mary. They're here from Wisconsin. They just want to go around and, oh, let's see what's in the neighborhood. So you get a lot of activity. Your serious people are going to show up in December. So if you have an open house in December, you may not get a lot of people, but the ones you get are going to be dead serious because they have to relocate in January. And they're looking for a home, and there aren't very many buyers out there and there are not very many listings um navmar where do you see prices one or two years out um i don't try to do that uh i wish i i ordered my crystal ball from amazon it hasn't got here yet it's 19 dollars um i just have oh and be sure and subscribe so you'll know when i get that crystal ball i it, i'm not an economist and even when i look at the economists out there um, they don't even get it right. Let me give you an example. Mortgage, uh, mortgage bankers uh, last week said that we're going to be up 15.1% in Q1, but we're going to be down 2% in Q4 of 2022. So I went back and looked and said, well, what did they say about 2021? They said we were going to be up between 4 and 5%. What happened? We we're up 30. Now, those guys know what they're doing. They're economists. They look at it. They blew it. Case Schiller back in 2020 predicted where we were going to be in 2021 and they said we were going to be down 3.1 percent that's a pretty big miss you're off by over 27 percent because we're up 30 so 
I'm not going to try and forecast. I can tell you where we're going to be in the next three months based on the number of homes that we have and the number of homes that are going under contract. And it's on that seven day moving average and the Cromford index. We know for 100% probability between now and Christmas, home prices are going to go up. It's already baked in the cake. So I wish I could be a forecaster and prognosticator. I don't attempt it. I don't attempt to go out one or two years, uh, but I do say let's watch the inventory numbers because houses going up or going down, it's all in the inventory. So if all of a sudden we see a huge spike, we've got 7,800 homes out there right now. Normal's 27,000. So if we see this huge trajectory heading up, it's not alarming at first, but if it continues, if we see it spike up in January and double and then go up two weeks later, well, then you can see the possibility that prices are A, going to level off, and B, they may start coming down. But it's not going to happen until inventory goes up. What can make inventory go up? I don't know. There's a lot of things out there. So we'll see what happens. For now, towards the end of the year, prices are going to increase. They're going up about 2.5% a month now. Doesn't look like that's going to change between now and January. So Stay tuned here as we update the numbers. I try to do it several times a week. Oh, I have to tell you, tomorrow we are not going to be able to interview Sam DeGreen. I uh, was really looking forward to that, but he's having some conflicts there. So I'll let you know when we can, we can reschedule and we're going to do a deep dive into our economy. And he's very entertaining. So everybody take on, have a great day, and I hope you have a fantastic week. See you soon.